Terry Bradshaw is one of my favorite people at Fox, a Hall of Famer back in the 80s. You know, we talk about the draft. He was taken number one in 1970 by the Steelers and then played 14 years for Pittsburgh, four-time Super Bowl champ, multiple-time uh, Super Bowl MVP. And um, right, by the way, this morning or this afternoon, wherever you're at, Terry, are you in Oklahoma? Are you in Florida? Where Where are you? I'm in Florida. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Florida. Yeah. You know, you played 14 years with with one team, and you were, and it was right. mostly really a good story. Were you a tad shocked with Tom going to Tampa? Oh man, yeah, I would say so for sure. I was shocked that he left New England. That made no sense um, after 20 seasons to be leaving New England. So what's the problem, right? Yeah. So there, there's a problem. You don't leave New England unless there's a problem. And uh, so, to me, there had to be a rip. Uh, he, he's tired of Belichick's uh, demanding ways. Belichick may be tired of him after 20 years. <laughs> uh, that's very likely. You know, two people, act from what I have heard, similar. Um, Tom's real demanding uh, as far as the offensive game plan, and Belichick's real demanding as a head coach. So, maybe... Maybe it's best that they move on with their lives. Belichick will continue coaching, but I thought that Tom would never leave New England. That made no sense to me. It's not a, you know, it's not a Brett Favre thing when he leaves Green Bay because they had Aaron Rodgers, right? And they were ready to move on. And Favre almost beat, you know, almost got Minnesota when he went to Minnesota into the Super Bowl, but they lost to the Saints. And then he went to New York Jets. Um, you look at. Uh, Montana going to Kansas City, he got him in the playoffs. Uh, but they had Steve Young uh, behind Montana. Uh, and then you look at Johnny Unitas going to San Diego, and that was, that was just that was just not necessary. John clear was way over and, and uh, should have never done that. So you, you, name up and look at Burke Jones. There's you know, various reasons why players move to teams. But this is one – that made no sense to me whatsoever. I did not understand why they would do it. And my only, and I don't think I'm wrong. I think it's just a personal thing. I think Tom had enough of him, and Bill probably had enough of Tom. And and uh, Tom thinks, you know, he'll take his his, his talents down to, to Tampa Bay, and they've got great receivers, and the coach down there is an offensive-minded coach. Uh, he's been great with Roethlisberger. He was great in Indianapolis. I mean, uh, yeah, with the Colts, uh, coach of the year there, actually, before going to Arizona. So Tom will go into a, a, a system that's going to be beneficial to him, and it'll have to be. But he's 40, you know, listen, you, eventually you say he is 43 years old. He is not a hard body. He's not someone that pounds weight. He does the flexibility, and he does all those things, and he, I don't know what he does, but that. Uh, He's not a weightlifter, uh, and uh, he's not uh, a guy that can avoid sacks. He's good in the pocket, moving around, he, but his athletic skills outside of that are pretty nil. He doesn't have much. Yeah. He does, his athletic skills are not very good. Never have been very good. You know, but Terry, it's interesting. Um, you know, Bill Belichick clearly lacks some warmth. You know, you had a coach who was a great coach like Belichick, a legend, but right. didn't right. didn't put his arms around you and hug you much. So you, no. I, I could make the argument, Terry, that you know, you know what that's like after 14 years and Chuck Knoll, did it sometimes wear on you that you just occasionally, you're a fun-loving guy, Tom's a family fun-loving guy, and the coach never puts his arms around you. It does wear on you. Yeah, it does, but... I wasn't ever going to go anywhere. I was going to retire. And listen, I told my father, I'm going to play for one team, and I said, so after nine years, if, I, if, if, if Chuck and I couldn't coexist, then I would have retired. I was not going to another team. I never wanted to go to another team. And, you know, they're both denying the risk. Come on. It just makes no sense. Right. Common sense tells you that, Probably both of them needed to, 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 to step apart and, and to move on. But not like this. I just thought the time should retire or stay there in, in New England. I, my, listen, if you apply the ego to this, Tom Brady probably – and we all want to be told how great we are. I'm not going to lie to you. 
I would have loved to have said, hey, we can't live without you. You're the best. You're, <laughs> you're, you're everything we ever needed in a quarterback. But, you know, that's, that's just childish and immature. You just, that's not something you grow to understand. I know I'm good. I don't need to be told by a head coach. And I just think that this is, this is unfortunate. I just, do not, and I'm not saying I don't want it to work. I'm just saying I just think this is unfortunate. Yeah. I never thought Brady Brady would would uh, would move on, but obviously he's. If he would tell the truth, he would tell you. They would, if 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 Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick would have come back, would have come out and said, "But we got love with the you. We love you. We we have no team without you." And just, I'm sure he would have stayed. Maybe you're right, Colin. Maybe he needed he needed some love. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, 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 you know, it's listen, it's, um, you know, I mean, athletes are different, you know, and people, by the way, are different. I was different in my 20s when I was single yeah. than when I had kids and was married. And, you know, Tom has maybe evolved and Bill's not going to evolve for anybody. And then, you know, st- you know stuff happens. It, you know, what's funny about this stuff, Terry. I don't remember. So I my theory on this is the teams that have an advantage because we're not going to have OTAs with this virus. We're just not. Right. Um, we right. may have a very abridged preseason. I, I, I'm hoping we have a season. I, I think the NBA season's not going to happen. But I think about right. this. When you don't have OTAs and you have an abridged camp, it's going to be a big a benefactor to the veteran head coaches and quarterbacks that have worked together, like uh, Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson, you know, that Doug Peterson and Wentz now of three or four years. Go back. Right. Now, I, that's my gut feeling. But go back right. to when you played. D- d- does an OTA matter? Does a camp matter that much once you've worked together for a while? No. No. No, not at all. I I didn't need uh, – we didn't have OTAs. We had a quarterback camp where you were in – we came into town after the draft for four days. And even at the end of my career, I uh, opted out of that. <laughs> I, I, didn't need, I didn't need that. So, you know, you don't. Know. A veteran football team or a veteran head coach and a veteran quarterback and, and people in place for most of these guys in Tampa, for example, we're going to talk about Brady. Uh, they, they won't need OTAs. I mean, they'll need two seasons. They'll have to learn the offense. They'll have to, and he will. He's a smart man. Uh, he's got, he's got a coach down there that's going to help him. Uh, they'll have to adjust their offense because he's not someone that's going to be able to hold the football. And he will pick up on this. Now they'll say, "Well, we got to get our timing together." You don't need their timing together. The guy runs a four six. He runs a four six. <laughs> you don't need to work time. If he runs a four three, he runs a four three. You play with players like that, um, and it's real easy to adjust. This whole thing about I got to get used to my receivers has nothing to do with timing. It all has to do with routes. And uh, whether they break it off at 10 or 12, that's the critical point. Whether they run a quick post at 8 or 12, whether they, whether they, do they break to the corner at 14 or 16. Uh, these are the little things that you pick up on, and they're not that hard to adjust to at all. You know, you're one of the most social people I've ever met in my life. Um, mm. You love people. You love being around them. Has this social distancing been tough for you? I, I can't believe you said that because <laughs> my daughter's here with me and her husband and the grandkids and and uh, they're um, they're in they're homeschooling so the teachers here and my wife we were sitting there having coffee this morning and my daughter goes you know dad uh, we we don't ever have to have conversations with you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? She said, because you just start talking and you'll say, what do you say? They say you want to play golf today? Okay, we'll play golf today. Play, what do you think, about 2 o'clock? Okay, let's play about 2 o'clock. Now, you go this and you go that. What do you say? Y'all like that? I think it's a good idea. And they said, you just talk. <laughs> I know. And now, well, the good news is you got your family around you. So that's the good news. I am. Yeah, I am lucky in that uh, I have my wife, one of my daughters, got a grandkid here. And my one son and son-in-law went back Sunday, and then I talked to my other two girls, and I said, "Look, we'll get you down here um, if this if we're stuck down here for a couple of weeks. We'll get a plane up there and get you down here." Yeah. 
so we can, can be together. So it's it's been I mean, listen, it's tough on me, it's tough on it's tough on everybody. It's, and it, it goes you know what happens, Colin, the longer this goes, the scarier it gets. And then you say, you know, how do you respond to this? What's this some scary stuff? What a, what's my reaction? Well we went and worked out this morning, Tammy and I did, and we're outside, and we walk in forever, and we're around no one, and so that's cool. Uh, when we've gone in and had to go in to get food, uh, we've done it the same way. We're very careful. And other than that, we have, you're exactly right. There's, you can't go out. I talked to my brother on the phone a while ago, and he said he might come by in a couple of days, pretending. So it's, everybody's just sick, and, and it's good to sit, but I've seen head coaches quit football and say, I'm going to spend more time with my family, and a year later they go, well, <laughs> head coaching. Why are they back to head coaching? Because that quality time with their family, they drove them back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, but yeah. thank God for the NFL draft because I've always been a fan of the draft. Yeah. You were draft, yeah. you were number one, 1970. It was a whole different world. So this year they're going to oh, do, yeah. they're going to mostly do it on the phone this year. Tell the story you've yeah. told it before. Tell the story of where you were, which is unbelievable because your games weren't on TV. You had very yeah. limited Terry Bradshaw. All these major USC's and Alabamas and Texas and Oklahoma, and Nebraska. And you get drafted number one that morning. Tell the story of when you got the call. Well, I did not know my father got a phone call from uh, George Hallis at 4 a.m. saying they were trying to make a trade with Pittsburgh and they were going to draft me. Now, I got up earlier. I got dressed, got my truck, got my boat out, got it all loaded up. I was headed out of the driveway in my parents' house. I was going fishing because the um, sand bass had schooled up on uh, Toledo Bend, and I knew where those band bars were, and I was going fishing. And Mike Phipps and I used to fish in the off-season together. So I'm going fishing, and uh, my dad came out. I was backing out, and my dad says, where are you going? I said, Dad, I'm going fishing. He said, you can't go fishing today. I said, well, why not? And I told him that sand bars, the, the, the sand, sand bass of schooled up and so on and so forth. And he says, I got a call from George Hallis, and uh, they're trying to make a trade with Pittsburgh and uh, to take you at the first pick. And I went, Dad, you know, really? Come on. That ain't going to happen. I figured third, fourth round at the best. And I figured New Orleans, because they had spent all this time with me for yeah. two years. Never heard of Pittsburgh, never heard of Chicago. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know anything about the draft because – Quite honestly, it was hell. Nobody knew about the draft. <laughs> the Louisiana Tech. <laughs> but you know, I was uh, certainly aware of it, and I knew the draft was coming up and it was going to happen that day. But I had no idea that it was that big a deal. That's why I was going fishing. God, that's incredible. <laughs> well, it shows you. How, it by the way, that's a good story. No, it it shows you how talented you were. That people didn't even have tape on. Everybody gets. Everybody at these big schools, to some degree, feels like they're overdrafted. To be number one, playing, never play a TV game, uh, is remarkable. He's a Hall of Famer since the 80s. Terry Bradshaw, best of luck to you and your family, and I hope we talk soon, Terry. Okay. So, to me, just call me. Look, I'm, I'm just here for you, buddy. You know I love you. Just call me. You never had me on your show. You had to have me on your show at the Super Bowl, and I appreciate that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, yeah, it just makes me feel good when I'm on your show. There so you have go. me on the show. There we go. All right? All right, buddy. Yeah. I'll sing a song. I swear I will. I'll tell some <laughs> jokes, whatever it takes. I'm here for you, and you know it. I know it. All right. We've, we've never needed your Are talent. Are you doing the show? Are yeah. you at home? No, I'm in this radio studio in L.A., and Joy Taylor's in her house. And, you know, we're, we're oh. making, you know what? You make, you just figure it out. That's what you do. You figure it out. I know. Crazy. Yeah. All right. All right, buddy. All right. Well, I'm right here. All right. And all your listeners out there, you know, just uh, read Psalms 23 every twice a day, and you're going to be in good shape. Okay. Psalms. That's my. That's what I'm passing on to you. Okay. Psalms 23 twice a day. All right, Terry. Thank you. Read it. Read it. All right. It's in the Bible. All right. Read it. All right. All right.
Thank you. Got to go find one of those. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.